Hey everybody, welcome to my garden. I know it's been a minute since we posted a video, so today we're going to take you on a full tour of the garden in early July. So today is July 5th when we're actually filming this video and that's an important date because there's a running joke in the Pacific Northwest that summer actually starts on July 5th, not the 4th of July, not before when summer actually officially starts, but on the 5th of July. And you can tell we're out here and it is bright, um, but we're doing this because we want to tour you around the garden. And we are starting up on our top wraparound deck this comes right off of our kitchen. And I wanted to start here because A, I've never shown you guys this particular area yet, but it's also a good reminder that when you're planning out your garden or your deck with planter boxes is that instead of getting overwhelmed by all the possibility, just work in little rooms. And so I tend to set my goals around what I want the different areas, beds, decks that I plant up, I tend to plan them out based on what I want to see from whatever vantage point I'm at. So we see this area a lot coming off the kitchen and also it's easy access to the kitchen. So I made it a herb garden slash beautiful flower garden. Um, so I'm really thrilled about how it's turned out. It's kind of a work in progress, but so far so good. So I, first off, I'll start here with just talking about the planter boxes. These are new additions to our house this year, and we have three. I have one here. I have one over to my left, um, and then one all the way over to my right. And they're similarly planted. Um, I have a large geranium in the middle with some super tunias, super bells, and then diamond frost euphorbia. I did try and get cute <laughs> and put some herbs in here thinking that that would work, but really the flowers have just taken over um, most of the boxes. And then I also have some uh, creeping Jenny here that I'm hoping kind of fills in over the top. So this was my pretty. I really wanted to be able to look out the kitchen window and see something pretty. But then down below here is where I start into my herb garden. So I have a rosemary plant. I have a sage plant, which this is actually about three years old. And it blooms so beautifully in early summer. And those blooms have finished, but now we're using it as herbs. Uh, we have a new cat this year, so I did actually plant some catnip. He doesn't seem to into it as much. Um, and just some chives in the base here. I need to fix some watering issues because it's really drying out, but something I'll, I'll do later. Up here in this obelisk, I actually have two clematis. I have the Countess of Wessex and I have the Duchess of Albany. It's kind of a royal theme going on. They have both filled in so nicely and have gone over the edge a bit. So that's gonna actually be a bit of a nice swooping floral uh, impact probably pretty soon. I'm seeing a lot of buds, so that's really great. Down below, I also have some tiny, some dwarf peas that are coming up, my cilantro, and then a few other flower plants. Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of this one, but this is a great forsythia that blooms bright yellow first thing in the spring, and then it just provides a nice anchor on the side of the plants. Coming around the corner here, just a couple more plants to point out. I am doing some trials of plants I've started from seed. This is actually a micro tom, so a miniature tomato plant. And I grew these from seed and then I'm also growing them in different size pots. So this is about a medium sized pot. I have a few in smaller pots and I have some down in my planter boxes. But you can see here, it's, there's tomatoes coming. So they're little cherry tomatoes and apparently this plant will only get about this big and will be just filled with little tiny cherry tomatoes. So I'm so excited to see how that goes. Um, I've also been growing some strawberries, some basil, and then just filling in with some other pretty plants. But the best part of this spot is the view. So over here, this is where I can get the scene of my entire garden. 
down below, which is where we will go next. All right, so I lied. We're not gonna go to the backyard right away. We're gonna make a stop at the front door because this is another area that I've worked on a bit and I think about a lot because it's a tricky one. It's an area at my front porch that gets mostly shade. It gets a lot of morning sun and then some afternoon dappled sun, but for the most part, shade. And what everybody wants for their front door is they want bright, shiny color, welcoming sign. And so I spent a lot of time just trying to think about what's gonna work best here. What I have this year is I embrace the shade and put a hosta in the front. And then I'm also growing some uh, begonias, but these are getting a little waterlogged. I think I need to um, just kind of pull them apart and replant them because they're, they're not doing too hot. What is doing really well is the big pot up here is I have uh, a Japanese holly as well as geraniums, some uh, super bell limoncello, and then... Um, a brunera actually in the back there to give it a lot of texture and a lot of really cool color. Um, so that's doing really great. Um, I popped in a coleus here uh, just about a week ago and then that's back planted with a daphne, a bacopa, and then I just threw a, a fuchsia up on top. And the fuchsia is not looking too hot because it was in too much sun in its last place and so uh, it's going to recover in the next week or so. So I'm not too, too worried about that. Um, another thing in terms of embracing shade but getting color is, of course, hydrangeas. And you can grow hydrangeas in pots. I have had a lot of success with it. The pruning is a little bit different in the spring, but for the most part, it's really low maintenance. And so this one is just starting to bud out, and I love 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 this color this one in particular this is about the third year in this pot however so i might pull it out um, and then put something new in here and then put this one out in the landscape um, over to your left here i have um, a couple trees under planted with some hippo polka dotted plants uh, some vermilier with some diamond frost euphorbia planted underneath my Rose of Sharon, which is my last to bloom this year. And then fuchsias and hostas and more of the polka dot hippo rose. So something I'm just kind of always playing with. This is all pots. You can move them around quite easily. It's all on drip and just, it's a constant experiment. So let's head over to the side flower garden and show you what's going on there. So we're still in the front of the house and this is our side yard and I want to show you around because there's been a lot of change up here and just within the last couple days actually. So first of all, holy cow, all the color that is under here planted under this limelight hydrangea standard. So the hydrangea has yet to bloom, it's working on it, but all of these super tunias and potato vine and snapdragons they're all just going absolutely bonkers. Um, I am fertilizing them once a week um, and trimming them up as I need to and making sure it looks like we have some bug action going on here. Uh, but for the most part, they're just doing their thing and it is so cool. Next to this, are the cannas are coming up. You'll notice I do have quite a bit of uh, Oh, holes in there. I have treated it and the leaves are coming up clean now. Just slugs in the area. It's just what I'm used to. Um, so the cannas are coming up very nicely, but what the biggest change has been are these lambs here. They do not, don't look too closely. They do not look the best. A couple days ago, they were about this tall and full of little purple flowers, uh, but they were dying off. And so now is the time of year to bring them back down if you let them flower. A lot of people just don't even let them flower and just keep them at the contained space and that is totally fine. But for ours, um, the little flower uh, on the lamb's ear was clashing with the red of the salvia. And so I just saw that they were dying back and I'm like, all right, it's time to, to cut them. Um, the current, this is a native Northwest plant, has just been doing amazing. The blooms on it this spring, were fantastic. So if you, anywhere you live, finding native plants is always, always a really good idea. They're just going to um, give lots back to you and your garden. So I highly recommend. Um, in the middle here, I have planted up 
five Roman red salvia and they're also just growing like gangbusters. And then I fl uh, front planted with white geraniums and then yellow supertunia vista um, right in front. And again, I'm just fertilizing. I'll deadhead the geraniums as needed, but for the most part, pretty darn easy. Um, and then behind all this craziness, I'll just sort of walk through here, is I have a set of three Nephophia. So this one is the one that's blooming, but there are three here. And um, some people call them red hot pokers. Um, their standard name is Nephophia. And again, just a really cool plant. They always sort of bloom near the 4th of July. Red hot poker, firecracker plant, some people call it. Um, but another really good option, and then they keep their leaves in the winter, and so they provide some of that winter interest. I have my Ostelomeria that needs to get a little bit taller to cover that cable box, just a little bit, but it's working on it, uh, and just always a good show. So let's swing around the front here. All right, so in the front of the garden, we have three Jackson Perkins walking on sunshine yellow roses and they're just getting ready to do another big push. You can see one here coming up but this one I planted two years ago and these two I planted last last year early this year. Um, so they're going to catch up in size to the big one and then create a, a larger hedge. Again I front planted with some bright pink geraniums and then over in this area, again, another area I'm just trying to experiment with to see what's going to work, but I planted a Coreopsis, which is so pretty. I just love, love, love that color. A Cleome. If you guys have never planted a Cleome in your yard, find a sunny spot and give them a try. This one will get about <clears throat> four feet tall, and I had one last year, and it bloomed clear through October, I want to say. It just gets huge, it puts on a great show, super hardy, and the bees love it. Um, also what the bees love, two blue salvia behind that, um, behind these roses in Coreopsis. When I planted them, they were only about six inches tall, and now they're about two, two and a half feet, and they'll probably get another foot or so tall and wide. So another great filler for a front, a front garden and really put on a show. Um, so that's the transformation here in the front garden and now we'll walk through the gate and I'll show you our, how our side yard, shade yard and backyard are doing. All right, so it's not perfect yet, but I'm pretty darn proud of this side yard. So let's come on through here. So if you've ever been to New Orleans and seen the beautiful side yards of those houses and how it's just so lush and glorious and mysterious a little bit for an entrance to a garden, that's kind of the vibe I want, but for now I'll take clean and put together and one of the best additions this year, Ryan built me an AC cover and I am so happy about it. Um, I think we're still going to stain it, but for now it just covers this ugly monstrosity. I can put some great potted plants right out in front of here and it just helps with the entrance. So I'm super excited. Other things, and this is the area I probably think about the most right now, perhaps putting in some really shade-loving hydrangeas that could add a more boost on this side. It really only gets morning sun in this space and not a lot of it, so I have to have really shade-loving uh, options, but I really think a, a hedge of some sort, something that's going to catch the eye of whoever is walking in um, to come into the garden. Another change that we made is we put the potting bench on the side of the house just to clean up the walkway off to the side and you'll see that in a second. But first let's just take a walk through the shade garden. I know we've talked a lot about the shade garden in our past videos but it's forever changing and growing and I'm getting different ideas for what I want to do next year uh, as it continues to grow. So Really the only change is that everything's really filled in, gotten more lush. I need to work on training some of my climbing hydrangea uh, growth onto the lattice, but that's something I'll have to do a little bit later. And just right now I'm working on just consistent maintenance. 
cutting off anything that looks a little rough, like I need to come through and cut this leaf off, but for the most part, not touching this garden other than slug bait because we love, the slugs love us, we do not love them. Um, my Annabelle hydrangeas are starting to put on a lot more growth. I'm not expecting a lot from them this year because they don't have that base hardiness of root systems from last year or branches from last year, but I, I'm expecting to see bloom. So just keeping an eye on those. My gentle giant is gently gianting. It's not moving all that much. Uh, so again, just keeping an eye on it and watching out for more slugs. So we come around the corner here. into the garden, which is just so full of color right now. And again, when you're looking at planting up your garden, remember to think in those rooms, those spaces. One in particular here, this current space off to my left that is front planted with a tree is an area I had no idea what to do with. I thought about it quite a bit no clue until one day I decided what would what would it look like if I made this a seating area and it really just started with that one idea of taking a space saying how can I make this a seating area it has a great view of the lower garden and it has some great shade to get out of the sun rest and relax and here we are today just defining a space with certain plantings uh, starting with your perennials then you can add in your annuals in different pots. Perhaps add a little tree in a pot. All different things that are just really great ideas. And if you're not overwhelmed and you're thinking in those smaller spaces, it's really fun to get that, those creative juices flowing. So I highly recommend it. Let's head down this way. So speaking of spaces, the, this garden area between my two large rhododendrons and this small space just above it have been a constant challenge for me the last couple years. The space that I am next to right here, the root system of the maple tree is very much at the surface. So trying to plant anything that needs a deep root system or I have to dig far down is a challenge and plants don't really seem to do well here if they do need that deep base. So you can see that I put a couple things in pots, just trying them out. I do have a Hebe that so far is doing really, really well and it has some blooms on it, which is super exciting. And a hydrangea in the back and then a couple daylilies on the front. So far, so good. Other than that, I've planted annuals that don't take a really deep root system. I didn't have to go down too far and, and just the pots. And so I'm gonna keep it, again, keep an eye on it and see how it goes and see if I can improve this soil base one day. Moving down uh, between the roadies, I'm really just throwing plants here. Not throwing is the best word. I'm putting plants here really just to see what sticks. I put in some hardscape. I have a bench with a pot and a large maple tree in it as a base but I really need some height in the back. I need to find plants that equally love sun and shade because it really gets a different flavoring of sun and shade if you're on the left side of the bed versus if you're on the right side of the bed. So this is probably my, my largest challenge right now, but I've gotten a lot of great color in here and it's coming along well. So. What I do have in here, just a couple things to point out. We did lift up the undercarriage of this rhododendron after it bloomed this spring. It was just dragging down and not looking too healthy. So we cut the bottom part out. And to fill this hole, I actually found a little lime hydrangea. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, little lime hydrangea, which I have the larger of this plant down at the bottom of the garden. So planted a hydrangea in here, some coleus, 
And then from last year, I have a couple sedum, which if you've never planted sedum, I would highly recommend it because even before it blooms, the little green buds are so pretty in flower arrangements and they just have the coolest texture. A couple of those, in a previous video, I talked about how I had planted yellow my daisy echinacea on either side of this bench. Well, we've had such a wet spring that they rotted out in just in this spot where they were because it was just way too wet. So before they completely died out, I moved them to a drier spot and put a couple salvia in their place. Um, a couple other things that I have done salvia in the back to give some height because I just know that's a tried and true plant in my yard. And the other thing I've done, I've planted a couple Brussels sprouts throughout. They have great texture, they get tall, and we like to eat them. So I had space, I needed to, to do a filler, and I'm not dead set on anything in this flower bed yet, so that's what I went with. We've moved down the garden a little bit to my next section that I focus on in terms of thinking about separate garden beds. And this is probably my favorite area of the garden. I just catch glimpses of it from different angles. And when the sun is shining just right, kind of how it's coming in here, it's just magical. There's so many great plants in here, some that I need to cut back and clean up a bit clearly, but for the most part, it's really just in its prime going crazy. And I wanna to talk to you about a few plants in here because there's a lot. So I'm not gonna go into every single plant, but I do wanna point out in a past video where we planted the salvia, just give you an update of where they are. This purple perfusion is doing great for some. I have a couple that are just not performing as well. So I think I'm gonna come in and do a hard prune back. It's kind of about that time for the salvia to where you prune back the spent blooms and then a whole new flush will come up from the bottom. I think I just need to do a hard cut on that and give them a little bit of a fighting chance to put some energy back and then hopefully catch up with the larger blooms that I still expect to get even bigger. So if you do have any of this type of salvia planted in your yard, now is the time to cut that back. Uh, anything that looks spent and if you look closely, you can see where there is new growth coming in. Just don't cut those and you're, you're good to go. I did also put in the front here some uh, Proven Winners Superbina. It's a type of verbena and they will get about 14 inches wide. They'll spread, but stay really low. I thought that was a nice bright, um, bright planting in front for the border along the new, the new edge of this new extended bed. For some other pops of color, I added in some Supertunia magenta in the front of the bed, as well as in the back, uh, the end of the bed. It's the front portion, but as the, as the crow flies at the end of this train here. Um, in a pot, on the ground, just to really anchor in some bright color pops in the space. And then com coming in here, a couple of my favorite, favorite, favorite perennials. This is almost at the end of its season, but Google, and I'm gonna say this wrong, yellow pale-eyed flower, or pale yellow-eyed flower, dang it, I'm gonna, it's one way or another. Anyways, it is the most amazing flower. I do need to stake it up a little bit better next year, but it is just gorgeous. And then if you let it go to seed, it will spread. And it's the grass, the greenery of it stays through the winter. So it provides winter interest. So you get it all year round. And I got this from my parents' garden and just love it. Two more plants I have. One is coming into bloom and one is about to come into bloom that I have in this garden bed. I want to point out because I got a couple questions when I posted a picture on Instagram of this setup earlier in the year. Someone asked me, why do you put tomato cages around your plants? And I do because of this tendency to flop. So the taller the plant gets, the more it's gonna flop over. And I just do not like having to go in after the fact and stake up plants and put string around them. It really is just easier sometimes to put a tomato cage in. And then as the plant grows up through it, you really can't see it whatsoever. And it gives it more of a natural fall 
of the plant. So back here are, is what, what's called a Shasta daisy, and this is a very tall and mature version of a Shasta daisy. Again, it came from my parents' old yard. And I think I have, I think there's three plants back here, one, two, and three. This first plant is the, always the first to bloom because it gets the most sun and then the others will follow and they'll bloom for a good couple months. I just need to go in and clean them out. In front of it is Rubeckia black-eyed Susan. And this is another tall, tall version of, of Rubeckia. I put the tomato cages around them so I get some support in the middle but it does push out down below. So I'll have quite the natural look with the tomato cage supporting it. So if you're looking in your garden this year and that you find that you have plants like this one that tend to flop over as they get the heavier blooms, feel free to throw a tomato cage around them. You can get the tomato cages that are green so they sort of blend in to the scenery if they're a shorter variety or just I'm using the standard metal ones in the back. Um, if, if it's a taller version, really, they're not going to be seen with all of the, the beauty in front of it. So swinging down to the end of the garden as the grass goes here, we have a bed of flowers that I tend to have drift in with the look of the rose garden with the arch here. So sometimes I, I look at these garden beds separately. I say, okay, what style do I want here? What style do I want here? But over time, I think these are just going to blend together even more so than they do now. That's just generally what I'm thinking about at this point. This whole bed starts a couple ways. So I do have some David Austin roses planted back here, front planted with hot lip salvia which is one of my favorites but the real show right now is this daylily this daylily came from my aunt sandy's yard in mississippi was in my parents yard in springfield and now is in our yard and it is just glorious right now so daylilies they one bloom a day so they bloom just for the day which i think is so special because you come down here you just appreciate that bloom and then tomorrow another bloom opens up and that one fades away. So what I do with my daylilies too as I'm walking around, I'll just sort of come in here and pop off the spent blooms. Um, if they're ready to go they'll pop off pretty quick. So if you don't want a lot of this dead because they do a bloom every new, new bloom, new day new bloom, you can just really pop them off as you come down um, as you're looking at the new ones. So just a quick tip for you. A uh, couple other yellow flowers I have going on. This one has a couple names. I've heard it called an Alexander plant. Uh, I think officially it's called a loose strife plant. Again, came from my parents' yard. And it started off as a variegated leaf plant. Uh, I don't know if you can see this around here, but this leaf here is variegated. And that's how the plant started, but then over time, it lost its variegation, which is kind of too bad. Uh, but I have a little bit of both right now. Either way, it's just glorious. It's front planted with some gara that's starting to bloom. And then in the back, we have more coreopsis and another yellow flower about ready to bloom. And I don't know the name. <laughs> it came from a good family friend's yard which I call Mike's yellow flower. And sometimes in your garden, that's what the names of the plants are, <laughs> of the name of the person who gave it to you. And that is, that is okay. We'll do another video down here once all of the asters are in bloom and the limelight hydrangeas are in bloom, but there's just a lot of yellow going on up front and soon we'll have blue asters and gorgeous, hydrangea blooms coming up in the back. So I can't wait for that. Finally, at the very bottom of the garden, this is where I'm building up my dahlia garden at this point. But mostly right now, it has become the foxglove garden because I have had so many foxglove come up this year and actually shade some of where my dahlias are coming up a little too much. So I need to work on this. So you can't tell now, but I have a dahlia here, here, about five or six along the back. One, ooh, that actually has a bud. Look at that. Woohoo! Here, 
And then I am on, I think the third set of tubers planted in this spot. Sometimes you just can't get anything to grow in a spot when you want. And I am pretty bummed about it because I have this whole vision of these two dahlias coming up to be about a three foot height set in front of me, so right behind the bench, and then the taller dahlias uh, in the back, coming up with the color in the back with a walkway between, but sometimes best laid plans. So I have another tuber that I just put in the ground. It was still alive, had some growth on it. Fingers crossed, if not, you know, we'll try again next year, but so far, so far so good on some of these other other dahlias too. If you planted dahlia tubers and they've come up out of the ground, a few things, slug bait, slugs love dahlias. If they haven't come out of the ground and you one day you think you saw a little bit of growth and then the next day they're gone, put down some slug bait. It's slugs coming and, and eating the, the tips of that new growth. Uh, and then when you're ready to fertilize, so I start fertilizing them when they're about this height, so about a, a foot and a half tall, you want to use a fertilizer that has no little to no nitrogen. So when you're looking at the fertilizer, it has three numbers on it. The first number is nitrogen. If you can get one that says zero or maybe one, that's your best. I use a fertilizer called More Bloom, and it's a 0 10, 10. And that's what I've always used on my dahlias. It will help them get a great root base, but then also focus on the flowers and not as much of the greenery. So um, when you're working on your fertilizer selection, be aware that dahlia is like something a little bit different than the rest of the plants in your garden. Okay, so I asked Ryan to get another shot of the whole back of this garden because I want you guys to picture it with me. This is what I do every single day when I'm, I'm looking back here. Right now, all I see are dead foxglove <laughs> at the surface. But picture this in two to three weeks as the dahlias raise up and have those glorious blooms. How amazing the end, the bottom section of this garden is going to look. Just if I close my eyes, you can close your eyes with me. We can all picture it together and will it to happen. And it's happening and it'll come, but that, that's one thing about dahlia gardens is that they grow and bloom a little bit later, midsummer, into the fall, and so they take a little bit of patience when everything else is just going gangbusters. So I encourage you, if you're having that similar moment of, ugh, I just want it to fill in and give us blooms, be patient, keep the dream alive, and it will, it will eventually be glorious. All right, so as you can see, my vegetable garden is off to my right, and we are going to talk about this in a whole separate video, so I don't wanna go into it right now, but uh, it's coming along great. I have put some new plantings in, I've harvested some onion and all of my garlic, and spinach and strawberries, and on and on and on, and more planting to come. I have, I'm putting more in the ground today, um, but, We'll talk about all of that in another video. So for now, I do want to bring you up the lawn. All right, so I think I am most proud of this garden bed right here. And I'll tell you how it started. So we were taking out grass and making new borders and garden beds. And in this section, I took out a little more grass than I had intended to. It was definitely a, oh, whoops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. So I rounded it out and really just leaned into it and thought about what I wanted this to look like, what I wanted it to look like from the top of the garden down, the bottom of the garden up, and what was going to be my centerpiece. So we already had the lattice in place for a couple clematis that we had already planted. Uh, I did add a new clematis to, to this uh, trellis this year, and I just noticed it's blooming. It's super exciting and it's so healthy. One thing I will tell you that we did with this lattice and something to know about clematis in particular, the more places they have to latch on and to string a tendril to, the more blooms that you will get. So a lot of people put in these types of lattice, 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 and just say, all right, clematis, 
grow. Well, if you have those thick pieces of wood, it's really hard for them to grow a tendril to wrap around the structure. So I recommend that if you do, do in, install a structure like this, put some fishing wire or some jute or some twine in between the rungs just to give that plant more, more power to give you more blooms. And dang, it's working. That's super exciting. So I have three planted on this lattice, all kind of of a general blue purple structure. Under planted, I have some English lavender that is in its first year. I'm going to cut it back pretty hard uh, so it doesn't get that woody base, but then I'll, it'll um, have a better show next year. And then in front, holy moly, look at this rose. My word, I planted these so late. I planted them Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, because I got them the same time I got the ones for my mom's garden. They're from the Weeks Roses line and they're called Sedona. So they have almost a corally apricot color to them and they smell delicious. They're a tea rose. And so far, man, look at this growth. They're just doing fantastic. Underneath the roses, I have Supertunia Vista yellow, and then a mounding border plant by Proven Winners. I don't know the official name, but I know it's called Beth's, Beth's Blues. I can tell you that, and they also love this spot. And when I look down from our kitchen nook window down here, I just love seeing the defined structure along the edge of the grass. At the end, I do have a tomato growing in a pot because I ran out of places to grow. So I underplanted with some Supertunia Vista magenta. Uh, and I have some of that also in a pot back against the house where I'm uh, babying a little willow tree in a pot back there too. Coming to the front, I guess the side for me, but the moving forward, another Coreopsis, I'm telling you, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, Gardens love Coreopsis. Check them out. They come in so many different colors, shapes, varieties, and they're just awesome. With my blueberries planted around, some Russian sage and some alyssum in the front for a little bit of, little bit of color. Um, but just overall, this area, I'm just so happy with this year. And I'm excited to think about what I can do to redefine it uh, next year a little bit more and make it even more spectacular. So it's pretty darn cool. The last section I wanna give you an update on is under our deck along the side of the lawn and everything is just going gangbusters. All Stellamaria, I have a couple hydrangeas that are coming into bloom here. Those have been there a couple years. I think I'm gonna give them one more year in that spot. They're not doing the best, but you know, they could be doing worse. And then all of our hostas that we planted in an earlier video this spring are coming along nicely. Because this is the first year for all of these in this spot, I expect them to get probably double the size, maybe a third bigger next year as they're uh, establishing their root systems and such. I continue to plant up some flowers, some color, at this pop out here, but I think it's where it's gonna be for the end of the summer and it's just doing great. The alyssum, I added uh, some more purple down, down below. And then I have a fuchsia here at the top that's just kicking rear and doing a really great job. All right, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tour of my garden in early July. This is the time where I get to enjoy the garden in a different setting. I'm no longer the gardener who is doing all of the big, heavy projects. Now I just get to work on maintenance and dreaming about next year and just watching everything grow. So I hope your garden is growing so well right now and you get to enjoy it just as much and you're also thinking about what could be this fall or next year so thank you guys for watching we'll see you next time if you like what you see here today be sure to click the like and subscribe button and if you want to be notified of new episodes click the bell